Hello, I'm Nick Poulin, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at a fantastic collection of early impressive antique firearms that once belonged to the noted author and collector William Keith Neal. William Keith Neal was an English collector and author who amassed one of the greatest collections of antique firearms ever assembled, which included over 2,000 firearms of high notoriety. He co-authored the standard reference for the history of British gun making from the 16th through the 19th centuries. By 1933, he had assembled a collection that was recognized as one of the most complete collections of English weapons in private hands. Later, in 1937, he was presented an award by Hermann Goring for his contribution to the British exhibition in the International Hunting Exhibition in Berlin. During World War II, while traveling to the U.S. to sell antique firearms on behalf of the Ministry of Economic Welfare, the ship he was traveling on was torpedoed by a German U-boat and he spent 14 days adrift in the Atlantic. The William Keith Neal collection was an extraordinary accumulation of some of the most interesting British arms ever produced, and included these superb examples. First, we'll be looking at an extraordinary cased Royal Double Barrel Forsyth Patent First Model Roller Primer Sporting Gun that was made for the Duke of Cambridge, the brother of King George IV. The Forsyth patent marked the beginning of the modern percussion system utilizing a fulminating powder or mixture to ignite the main powder charge. Alexander Forsyth patented the system in 1807, and the scent bottle or roller type is the earliest form. This gun is fitted with an early form of the roller type with mechanisms that mount through the lock plates and must be taken out of the barrels before the barrels can be removed from the stock, a very time consuming and delicate task. The 30 inch scalp twist barrels are engraved with the earliest known address that was utilized from 1808 through 1809. The locks are marked with the earliest Forsyth patent marking that was utilized until around 1810. The firearm was featured in Neil and Back's reference Forsyth and Company patent gun makers. This gun is considered the finest known example and represents a significant milestone in firearm development. Here is a superb and very rare cased pair of best quality Irish flintlock dueling pistols by Robert McCormick. Robert McCormick is known to have worked in Belfast, Northern Ireland from 1792 through 1794. He later moved to Dublin with known examples that are dated 1796. It is not known where he received his training, however his craftsmanship and attention to detail rank among the best of his era. This lovely high quality pair features 10 inch swamped octagon barrels of watered iron carrying the McCormick Dublin address. The locks are of the highest quality craftsmanship having the best style of Volo moldings around the plates and the edges of the beautifully filed serpentine cocks. The locks also feature rebated tails, semi waterproof pans, roller frizzins and blued feather springs having bulbous finials with teats. They are engraved with a stand of arms and feather bursts behind the fences, and sprays of minor scroll which surround the McCormick engraved in gold ovals under the pans. The quality of these pistols cannot be overstated. The extreme attention to detail can be seen in the impeccable engraving and the fine finish. Next is an extremely rare and massive 7 bore single barrel flintlock big game rifle by John Manton. It is one of only three such impressive Manton rifles known and has a silver presentation from the Marquis of Huntley, circa 1791. Only two other large bore John Manton rifles are known. This exceptionally early example has a 33 inch swamped octagon barrel of stub twist with an under rib that is fitted with two beaded pipes which hold a rosewood ramrod. The lock is an early style with a rebated tail. It has a semi waterproof gold lined pan, a bridled roller frizzin with a small roller on the tail which rides over a hump on the feather spring with a nicely filed bulbous finial. The European walnut stock bears a full-size silver side plate with a presentation from the Marquis of Huntley. 
a truly extraordinarily rare early Manton large bore big game rifle described in the reference the Manton gunmakers by Neil and Back. This is a very fine and rare John Manton over-under flintlock pistol with a single trigger, featured in the Manton Gunmakers by Neil and Back. The attractive 8-inch scalp twist octagon over-under barrel set has a gold inlaid Manton address and platinum line touch holes. The flat plates are fitted with French cocks, semi-waterproof pans, bridled frizzins with small rollers on the tails, and feather springs without finials. This example is illustrated in the Mantons, Gunmakers, by Neil and Back, and is one of the best examples in existence today. This case pair of Joseph Manton pistols have two early percussion conversions, one by Forsyth and another by Joseph Egg. This pair of 50 bore pistols were originally made as flintlocks in 1805 and have 10 inch octagon stub twist barrels with under ribs. Around 1810, one pistol was fitted with a Forsyth patent scent bottle percussion lock number 2098. Alexander Forsyth is credited with the invention of the percussion principle, the forerunner of all later developments in propellant ignition resulting in ammunition as we know it today. The scent bottle contained a powdered potassium chlorate mixture. Rotating the bottle deposited a small amount of the powder on a platform where it could be set off with a blow of the hammer. The other pistol has been converted to percussion circa 1825 with a well-made drum and nipple replacing a touch hole in the patent breech. It appears that a new lock has been fashioned with a very early style integral fence and a flat faced hammer with a square head which is also shielded at the right of the nose. This pair of pistols is described in the Manton Gunmakers by Neil and Back, and any example of a Forsyth lock is scarce, this example being in excellent condition. Here we have a superb, anachronistic John Dixon double flint shotgun made for the eccentric Charles Gordon and presented to William Keith Neal in 1953 when he became the master of the gunmaker's company. Charles Gordon was a wealthy Scottish gentleman who had a great love for fine antique guns. His love became obsession, and in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s, he had many of the best gunmakers of the day build guns for him. They included James Purdy, Alexander Henry, and Harcum. The majority were made by John Dixon and Son, totaling 229 guns. 15 of those were flintlocks. Gordon was interested in early ignition systems and most of the guns he had made were reproductions of guns and rifles of much earlier types, including pinfires and tube locks. He had an attraction to large bore guns and ordered many eight and four bores. John Dixon referred to Gordon as his grand patron. When his three half-sisters had him deemed mentally insufficient, a lawyer was appointed to manage his affairs. To clear his debts, his wine, books, silver, and other contents of his house were sold. The collection of early type guns were auctioned on June 20th of 1908 and sold for a pittance as no one had any use for muzzleloaders at the time. This gun was sold to Gordon on May 21st of 1894 and probably cost around 94 pounds. It brought only 4 pounds in the 1908 sale. For some reason though, the flintlock guns brought fairly good money in comparison to the percussion guns which many sold for under 1 pound. This gun was later presented to Neil on the occasion of him becoming the master of the gunmaker's company in November of 1953. It is pictured in the publication Charles Gordon Magnificent Magnus as well as in the John Dixon and Son The Round Action Gunmaker by Donald Dallas. It is interesting to note that this gun is the only one of all the other case guns pictured that includes a dog whistle. This is a very fine John Twig single barrel flintlock rifle. 
John Fox Twig was a prominent London gunmaker from around 1770 until his death in 1790, when his business was continued by his nephew John Bass, who died in 1795. Twig was responsible for beginning the high reputation given to the London gun trade. His apprentices included Durs Egg and John Manton, who became his shop foreman until he went out on his own in 1781. This fine rifle was made around 1775 and has 28 inch swamped octagon barrel of scalp twist with an underrip. The top flat is engraved twig in script with a London address. The lock has a rebated tail, flat faced serpentine cock, rounded pan, a bridled roller frizzin, and a feather spring with a bulbous finial and teat. Here are some more noteworthy firearms from the Keith Neal collection. If you like this video and want to learn more about quality collectible antique firearms from prominent collections, then visit our website at PoolinAuctions.com. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, stay safe, and send it downrange. <laughs>